depending on the last year. So I, yeah, as as of now, I, he's one of our, our best players, and sure, we expect him to be in camp. Why are the Cavs acting like everything is so chill in Cleveland? They're just headed into camp all together as one big happy family. In professional sports, ink to pen is all that matters. Mm -hmm. To ink to paper is all that matters. And he said it, Kyrie Irving is under contract for the next two seasons. There's no reason for me to worry. There's no reason for me to panic. I anticipate one of our best players is gonna be on our roster. I anticipate unless somebody gives me a knockout deal, he's gonna be in camp. As long as LeBron James says he's not waving his no trade clause, I anticipate he, Kevin Love, and LeBron to be leading my squad to the NBA Finals next year. What should I be worried about? You know what, and, he, and they've been criticized, I literally just criticized them about 45 seconds ago, but like, I would do the exact same thing if I was in their shoes. Here's, some, here's this, is, this is what the Knicks did wrong with Carmelo. They're like, we want to trade Carmelo, Carmelo wants to go. That just brings his value down. If you go up there and you say, you know what? We love Kyrie Irving. We've been to the finals three straight times. He's going to be there in training camp. Then you don't seem so thirsty to ship him out, even though we all know that with the second that press conference is over, Kobe Altman's on the phone trying to trade Kyrie Irving. But that's besides the point. You are right. All that matters is the contracts. It's like I always say to you, it's not a problem until it's a problem. He's a Cleveland Cavalier until he gets traded to another team, and that's why they expect him to be in training camp. Do you expect him to be in training camp, though? Until they get a knockout offer, I do, because there aren't many all-star level players that are available to be moved. The ones that don't have long-term contracts with their current teams are going to be in play. They will be discussed, but at this point, the Cavs own the leverage. And what people take for granted, it is hard to win in professional sports. Mm. Okay, the Cleveland Cavaliers have won a championship and been to the finals the last three seasons. You're not going to just tinker with it at this point of the season because the player's currently unhappy. You allow the situation to play itself out, and that's what I think they're going to do. And I think that we as media members are constantly speculating, oh, like, okay, you can move him for the Timberwolves and get Wiggins back, or maybe Eric Bledsoe and the Suns and the Knicks and get Carmelo. But honestly... What I would do if I were the Cleveland Cavaliers is not trade Kyrie Irving. I would just keep him on the team and say, LeBron James, you're a professional. Kyrie Irving, you're a professional. You guys work it out. Every single person watching this show or listening to this podcast works with someone that they would rather not work with. It's no different on a basketball team. It isn't any different. And also, again, they've had so much success together. People tend to dismiss all of the journey and only look at the final result. It means something to win a division. It means something to win the East. It means something to make it to the NBA Finals and be in a position to play on the largest stage in professional basketball. Not many teams are going to be in that spot. So therefore, for Cleveland, a team, a city, that hadn't won a professional championship in over 50 years? You think now all of a sudden we're just going to throw all of that away? Because the media? or a couple of fans feel like, oh, he wants to be gone. So they want, we're going to trade him to your squad so you can now root for him? <laughs> not going to be able to do it. I love this so much. This is a Danny Shot. Ainge move. Shot. Shot, this shot, is a Danny shot, Ainge shot, move. Shot, it's just like, shot, I'm going to tell shot, my shot. fans and I'm going to tell my players that I gave a better offer to the Pacers for Paul George. It's managing the message. It's what you're saying. is Because you know there's a lot of Cleveland fans being like, wait a second. Um, Paul George got traded to the Thunder for what? And there was an offer on the table from the Cavs and you messed that up? He's basically saying, I didn't mess that up. The Pacers messed that up. How did you read that? I'm glad you went there. Because don't make me jump in an Uber and go around to the Quicken Loans offices right now. I had to sit down to Mr. Dan Gilbert to talk about this. A proud sponsor of the Jaden Rose Leadership Academy. The fact is, this is being reported like Paul George was going to be traded to the Cleveland Cavaliers for Kyrie Irving. Mm -hmm. The thing that's getting lost is the goal was to have a roster with LeBron James, Paul George, and Kyrie Irving. Kevin Love was the all-star player that was going to be moved to the Denver Nuggets. So when he says he felt like they should have got a better offer, that doesn't mean they would have gotten Kyrie. I think people have gotten that part of the deal misconstrued. That's a, that's a really good point. And the Pacers asked for Irving for Paul George, but 
they didn't get it. Instead, they had a three-team <laughs> deal with shipping out Kevin Love. And it would have been a really interesting team. But guess what? Now, the Cleveland Cavaliers are in complete shambles. And I enjoy every single second of it. They're not in shambles. We just got finished talking about that. What do you mean? They got Perception. LeBron James, Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Love. Perception is reality, Jalen Rose. We've talked about this many times. Perception is reality. They're going back the to the media. finals. Uh, here's what the I'm doing. media. I said this immediately when it happened. All you need to do is set up a dinner between Kyrie Irving and LeBron James. Have them work it out. Next thing you know, you're going right back to the NBA finals. You just cross your fingers and hope that one of the players gets injured. Moving on, James doing with his offseason besides listening to Meek Mill. He is working out in Las Vegas, and he's working out in Las Vegas with Eric Bledsoe. That definitely means that they're trading Kyrie Irving to the Suns for Eric Bledsoe, right? For those that follow this program, August, September, 2014. It was discussed that when LeBron James is working out with his little brother, Eric Bledsoe, hmm, that may be a sign that there's a little frost between he and Kyrie Irving. And while Kyrie Irving is, has become a better overall player, he may actually prefer being on the squad with Bledsoe. Hmm. For those that follow this program, you conversation happened. So don't look at the bottom of the ticker. This is not breaking news. Don't be alarmed when you see them working out in Vegas together. They under the same representation, Clutch Sports. It's not breaking news when Derrick Rose gets invited. They're teammates. Exactly. Invite, let me see. Inviting everybody to, oh, Vegas. To come work out. Of course they're invited. And another thing is, remember when he worked out with Ben Simmons? Everyone's like, oh, he's going to go to the Sixers. Like, just because LeBron James takes a couple jump shots with somebody does not mean he's definitely going to be teammates with that person. He has been working out with Eric Bledsoe for years. It's just because of the funky timing of the Kyrie Irving news that we are sort of taking this and then running with it for a mile. But the fact of the matter is, dude's just working out with somebody who's in his, his agent family. That's all it is. And he's and done in the past. And somebody, again, that he clearly would like to play with mm -hmm. and is going to be in conversation as Kyrie Irving's scenario gets played out. So don't be surprised when two, three, four team scenarios get thrown around that that isn't a potential. Now, Jalen, I'm a hardworking, focused professional, but... Here's the thing. If I really wanted to get work done, I wouldn't go to Vegas. You know, it just seems like a weird place to be working out. It's like, oh, we're going to really get ready for this season, man. We got to turn it up. We got to really get ready. Let's go to Vegas. Meet me at Vegas. And then we'll, we'll really focus on this work. Like, to me, that's not how it works. That's not how it works for me. For everybody, look up. The plane that just flew over your head, I'm going to tell you why you work out in Vegas. Mm. Because what happens there stays there. And therefore, whether I'm in my home that I rent or own, whether I'm in my luxurious suite that has multiple floors in a casino hotel, I get to do what I want, say what I want, and my business is not blast. Yet I could go to the gym, get a sweat in for a couple hours a day, and still enjoy the rest of it. I would be enjoying the rest of the day way too much to be effective working out the next day. But that's just me. I'm not in the NBA. I'm not LeBron James. Coming up next on Jalen and Jacoby.